Okay, right now I'm in a DC food court at peak hour. This is like 7 p.m. in the evening. It's very noisy, and this is what the environment sounds like. Okay, so I'm switching over to the Givali Gemini 2's microphone in 3, 2, 1. Okay, so this is the Givali Gemini 2's microphone. How does it sound? Let me know in the comments. Today we're going to look at the DVLA Gemini 2. Gemini 2 is a follow-up from the first Gemini, which was pretty impressive. Its active noise cancelling was among the best in its time, better than even Sony's earbuds, having also impressive sound quality. But there were complaints about its case being bulky. So now we have the Gen 2, which is smaller in terms of both the earbuds and case, while looking more polished and more premium. Gen 2 also has multi-point pairing, which lets the buds stay connected to up to two devices at once, and custom tap controls, neither of which the previous version had. But what about Gen 2's performance in terms of sound, noise cancelling, and call quality? And what are the pros and cons? Also, is it worth that eye-watering price tag? That and more will be covered in this video. As usual, there will be links to its Amazon and Lazada pages if you want to check its latest price in the pinned comment down below. And if you want to see more reviews from this channel, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. The Devil Gemini 2 has got active wind reduction technology, which is supposed to filter the noise of wind from the microphones so that the calls sound extra clean. Sounds good. So let's test it in both quiet and noisy conditions using some really loud cafe style background noise and some wind noise coming from this fan. I'm now making a phone call in a quiet place using the DVLA Gemini 2. I'm now making a phone call in a noisy place using the DVLA Gemini 2. The quick brown thumb jumps over the lazy dog. Though a little muffled, its mic pickup in general sounded quite intelligible. I was more impressed by how it cuts background noise to the extent that it's barely a whisper, and there wasn't even a hint of any wind noise at all. So overall, AWR seems to work quite well, quite decent mic pickup in general. Now we're going to test its active noise cancelling using the same cafe noise as before. In terms of active noise cancelling, it actually seems to be better compared to the previous version because it seems to cancel more low frequency noise. It's got something called adaptive noise cancelling which compensates for how the earbuds fit into the ears as well as something called internal delay compensation or IDC which makes them super reactive to intermittent noise. That is why even if it doesn't have foam tips, it is still one of the top noise cancelers in the market. If you want to confirm that for yourself, if you want to compare its ANC or call quality to your other earbuds, do become a member for $1 per month or more. This gives you full access to my personal comparison tool, which you can use to compare earbuds A to B at your own time and at your own pace. Many people have joined up, especially people who can't just simply visit a store anytime to compare earbuds. They know that this is going to save them so much time being able to just cut through all the marketing and compare these earbuds remotely without visiting a store. So become a member like them, click on the link below to find out more. In terms of transparency, it sounds clean and they've got good amplification. Maybe a little bit of occlusion in there, but in general, very usable for conversations or just being aware of your surroundings. In terms of sound, it's crisp, tight, and punchy in the bass and mids, but not to the point of sounding too 
boomy. It also sounds quite high res, having little trouble resolving bits of detail that can hardly be heard on other earbuds. Some extra shimmer in the cymbals, a bit more grain in the bass guitar, things like that. Listen to the sound samples and tell me in the comments what you think. By the way guys, if you want to compare its sound quality to other earbuds side by side, visit loudandwireless.com's sound samples page, link in the description. On its default tuning, it can sound a bit too thin in the lower mids. I myself do enjoy a bit more gravity and richness when listening to vocals, but these do sound lacking in that area, unless I bump up the 400Hz band in the Gemini app's graphic EQ. Also, there seems to be just a bit too much shimmer in the high frequencies. It's got quite a bump in the 14kHz region according to this frequency sweep, so instruments like bells and triangles can sound too bright and dominant for my tastes. Pushing down the 8kHz band in the Gemini app seems to make it more bearable, but it would have been better if I could target that specific frequency range instead. For the frequencies that can be adjusted though, I find the Gemini 2s to be very responsive to equalizing, and it largely retains the EQ even at high volume levels. Speaking of volume, if you feel that earbuds like the Sony WF-1000XM4, XM5, Bose QC2 earbuds are not loud enough, you want it to be louder, these are very loud. Loud enough for me even at 40% volume, which almost never happens. So overall, it performs quite well. Good microphone pickup, active noise cancelling, and it sounds pretty good too. Multipoint pairing is reliable and seamless when connected to my PC and my phone at the same time. I don't have to pause my music on my phone to switch to whatever I'm playing on my PC. I just press play on whatever I'm playing on my PC and that directly takes over the Bluetooth stream. Easy. Even though the buds are smaller, they have a very tight and snug fit. If there is one thing that DVLA really nailed here about the earbuds design, it's definitely the way that these things plug into my ears and stays there without much adjusting really. The app is also very polished and clean, which is what you would expect of a brand like DVLA, a premium brand. In short, the DVLA Gemini checks off a lot of boxes. That being said, there is still room for it to be better, just some minor issues that many people may not even care about, but it's still worth mentioning nonetheless. For instance, it doesn't have the option for various levels of ANC or transparency, so you only have full noise cancelling or full transparency, nor does it have the option to turn off noise cancelling entirely to extend the Gemini 2's battery life. Its battery life is also pretty average given the current landscape, rated up to 5 hours in the buds and up to 22 hours with case. Not bad at all because I was playing Elden Ring using the Gemini 2's and it lasted me about 4-5 to five hours with still some juice left in it to spare, but considering the current landscape of truly wireless earbuds, it is not among the best. And it doesn't have volume controls on the earbuds too, which forces you to use the volume rocker on your phone, even if it's in your pocket or your bag. Like I said, these are minor issues because by and large, the Gemini 2 does check most boxes. For that price though, well, it's clearly not meant to be a fast-moving, value-for-money product. It's more like a statement piece. For me personally, since even the Sony WF-1000XM5 is what I consider to be expensive, at this price, I personally would think extra hard before dropping cash for the Gemini 2. 
let alone the 24 karat gold plated Opera de Paris version. But you might feel differently if you want top tier noise cancelling, very loud volume that can maintain its EQ from a famous high end European brand. If you want to check its latest pricing, in case it's on promo, I've got links to its Amazon and the Lazada pages in the description below. That's all I've got. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see more reviews from this channel, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. I'm also on Twitter where I tweet about random stuff. So do follow me there and click here to watch my very old review of the first gen Gemini from 2021. If David A is still selling it, it's looking like very good value right now.